Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome into another episode of Harmonious. Brandon back with you. And I have a special guest today, Lainey Love, going to be joining me here. And we're going to be diving into a topic that I'm excited to dive into. It's how to live your bigger mission. If you know anything about me, for those of you who have watched the show, subscribers, first of all, shout out. Thank you. I love you. Uh, you know I love mission and I love this topic, uh, especially talking about business and personal life and how those two overlap. So I am so excited to jack to dive in and unpack all of this. But before we go any further, Lainey, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I love this conversation too, business and life and and how to grow it, um, especially in the now when we have so many really cool tools that we didn't have before and, and different ways of thinking and, and being. Uh, it creates a really interesting opportunity for growth. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So let's let's start at the top. Let's first define in your words, mm. what, what are we talking about when we say living into your bigger mission? What do you mean by that? So living into your bigger mission to me means that each of us are here for a specific reason, a perfect um, and a purpose, and we each have a gift to give. And when we tap into that, when we access that and live into that, uh, we continually give birth to um, other people's bigger missions. So as we witness other people doing and being like, great things, whatever that is, it looks different for every single person. And that's the cool thing is that it's so diverse uh, that it gives us permission to do the same. And that's why a story matters. That's why we're so interested in story. And that's why we, we love, you know, reading about what's going on in other people's lives, because there's something in that that uh, awakens us or inspires us or gives us permission to do the same. And that is what living into your bigger mission is. It's what is your particular purpose? Because each individual's purpose has has a meaning. And that is really, really exciting because we're all so different and we don't have to try to be somebody else or do what somebody else is doing because they've created success in this particular industry or, or invented this particular tool. It's whatever it is that is within you, that is your purpose that is your mission and it's going to create ripples of change yeah that is so powerful and important to just highlight too where you say it's your individual yeah. mission and purpose there was actually a it struck me on a previous episode of of harmonies at lunch probably at this point two or three episodes ago if you're if you're new to the show um the the realization was that most experts and gurus or and dietitians too like they're they're preaching what worked for them and then they're selling it to the masses and most people don't have the same results and i think that translates perfectly to what you were saying because people get so caught up as like look what they're doing i need to copy it and get that outcome but really what and what you're emphasizing here is the complete opposite like you need to find your mission, your path, your purpose. And that's exciting to hear from you. So I'm curious to hear how you start to unpack that with your clients. How do you help people find what that purpose and their mission is? Well, going back on what you said, like that is really important to witness other people and what it is that they're doing because it does unlock something in you. It starts a fire within like, wait a minute, what they have, I want, uh, and why, but then why do you want that? And that's what begins like, the journey to you discovering what your particular mission is, is who do you find yourself either jealous of <clears throat> or inspired by? Um, those are the little clues as to what it is that it that you're ready to give birth to. So if I'm re really inspired by this person's creation, well, then likely I'm here to create something. 
if I'm really inspired by that person's ability to speak, then likely I'm here to, to speak about something. So there, there are always lots of clues that are guiding you on your path to discover what it, your mission is. And what are you naturally interested in? What are you naturally inclined or curious about? Uh, then those are more clues as to what that is. And what is the thing that makes you not be able to sleep at night? Like, what is that thing? And it could be like, if you just think of something now, no plastic is definitely like, <laughs> um, it's not a controversial subject, but we're, we're we have begun to understand the negative effects that plastic has on our lives. But if we just think of something like as simple as the plastic bag, like somebody had to dream that up and create it. But do we know who who it is that did, did that? Because it's not like super fancy or flashy. Um, yet yeah, it's it's a really important tool that we have used for a very long period of time. So it can be something like that. Like it doesn't have to be like flashy, like I'm creating the next rocket that goes to outer space or I'm creating the next um, Alex Her Hermosi style business where I'm really public and I'm really flashy and I'm, I'm in front of people's faces. You could be doing something behind the scenes that's going to create a massive impact that's going to like create a ripple effect for, for generations. You don't know what that is. So it might seem like something that you're fighting against because you're like, oh, well, that's not interesting enough or that's not cool enough or that's not big enough. But we have no idea actually how useful or impactful our particular vision is or our ideas are and what that will create in the world. And often those things can intercept. Like my, my vision and your vision could end up connecting and creating something even beyond what we ever imagined. And that's why it's important also to be living into your mission is because you are meant to connect with other people. And as we are on our path, the path that's laid out for us individually and specifically and uniquely, then we, we're, gonna, we're gonna meet those coincidental points, those divine points of connection and witness the thing that we weren't even aware of, the greatness of our creation and the effects that that has. Yeah. And I think when a lot of people think about this question, it's such a big question, right? Like, what is your purpose? <laughs> First of all, you can't just like answer that one day. It's got to, yeah. you have to find it, seek it out. And, and trial and error is a big part of it. I'm sure you, you understand that too. And you tell that to your clients, but also on the other side of that, like, how, so how do you go about this process of identifying your purpose and then on the flip side of that working and living in your purpose because what i find is what i work outside of my purpose and i'm very clear on what that is i get so drained it like yeah. it is emotionally physically draining to me whereas if i'm working in my purpose i could probably work for seven days straight like and not lose a single bit of energy as you could tell from on this show, watching this show, if you're a longtime listener and subscriber, again, thank you. But I, <laughs> I get jacked up by doing this. I love talking to other entrepreneurs and people who are helping business owners and entrepreneurs win in the world. I could do this for a week straight, not take a break and have the same amount of energy. So how, how can we unpack that and first get on the path to finding our purpose and then also make sure we stay there? Well, the thing is, is it's not easy, right? And we want things as humans, I think, to be easy. And then if it's, we think if it's not easy, then it's not meant to be, or that can't be my thing. Um, and that is definitely not the case. Uh, but those are clues, as you just said. Yeah, uh, how how filled up, how energized do you feel by something? I'm, I'm the same, like, I don't have, I don't have a day off. I don't have working hours because... I never feel like I'm working. It's, it is what I would do for free. It's what I have done for free in, in, in my past. Um, it's what I spend, it's what I read books about. It's what I spend all my free time uh, on. It's, it's what I would choose to do uh, no matter what. And that always, that wasn't always clear as to exactly what that is or was. It took a lot of 
I, I studied this, I worked as this, I did this, I went down this path. Um, it took me about uh, at least 10 to 15 years to start to uh, integrate all of the different interests and how it is that they fit together and what my particular unique path was and how it is that I got there was a lot of work, a lot of trial and error. Um, and it, that doesn't have to be the case for you. It doesn't. I fought against it a lot because it wasn't what I thought I wanted it to be. You know, I wanted it to look this way. I wanted to have this title. I wanted to do this thing because of so many different various reasons. We have, you know, whatever the culture that we've grown in up in. We have uh, the family that we've grown up in. We have our ancestral stuff. Like there, there are a lot of different factors that influence or cloud your clarity um, so that it makes it easier for you to get to the point where you can recognize and have a sense of peace with oh, this is what I'm meant to do, and then get to celebrate that. I didn't want to be a coach uh, at all. I didn't really claim the title until I actually won an award for it. Um, I always thought of myself as like a healer or a therapist, and I never really thought of myself as a coach. So now I, I own that I'm a coach. <laughs> I took that as a divine sign from the universe, like, okay, uh, I'm definitely this. So it, we have to leave room for the world to give us feedback so that we can get the clarity as to what it is that we're here for and what it is that we're doing. And yes, are there steps? We did go over a few of those as looking at the people. Who am I inspired by? Who am I envious of? Who am I jealous of? Those are like, your feelings are great, whether we... Um, Call them like good or bad or wanted or unwanted. They're all great because they're just, they're giving you feedback. It's giving you information. I like this. I don't like this. That's great. That helps you to get to where it is that you're going. And then how do you feel when you're doing it? Do you feel energized? Do you feel drained? That, that was a, a great point that you made because uh, that is a very, very clear signal as to whether or not you're on the right track. And if you find yourself uh, fighting with an idea within yourself, then then that's time to do some work. Okay, I'm having a war within myself. So either my programming or my conscious thoughts um, are blocking my divine inspiration. So when we get to that, when you can look at whether or not it's the divine, uh, what your divine inspiration is, because that is giving you the clue. So that's that quiet voice within yourself that's telling you, no, go this way. No, go that. Uh, go that way. No, do this. And when <laughs> that's that's always a great clue for me when I'm arguing with myself. I'm like, but wait a minute, <laughs> it's just me. How can I be having an argument with myself, <laughs> right? So I know that there's something here for me to look at, and so that could be my subconscious programming that doesn't belong to me, um, or it could be my inner voice. And my job is to figure out which one is it. Mm. How do we do that? We do that. There are so many great tools out there. There are so many uh, amazing, talented people. Um, there's lots of different forms of subconscious reprogramming um, or examination because you have to examine it as you're reprogramming it. Uh, and hypnosis is one, rapid transformational therapy, neuro-linguistic programming, uh, psych K, uh, emotion code. There's, there's lots of different tools. So you can pick any of them. They all work. That's the good news. There are so many tools and they, I'm going to wager that they all work. I haven't tried all of them, but I've definitely tried many of them um, out of curiosity and interest and in trying to shift those things within myself. Hmm. Yeah. I, I think as entrepreneurs, we're inclined to try those things because we always want to get better and improve and, and produce more, like be more effective, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure a lot of, I know I have tried a lot of those things and what, what's come up for me recently, I, I spend a lot of time uh, in prayer and praying about, mm -hmm. you know, decisions that need to be made and, um, and feelings and, and whatever it is, that the, all of the stuff that we're talking about. And what I have found is that the inner voice 
when it's negative, it's it's probably from you. If it's trying to beat you down and say you're not good enough and, and you don't have what it takes, that is not a good inner voice. That's probably some programming in your subconscious. If it is a positive direction that's building you up, it's possibility, that is probably from God. That is the other voice that you're talking about That's that you're denying because the, the negative voice, it's like the devil and the angel on the shoulder, right? That, that old image. That's the voice that's trying to guide you forward. But oftentimes, especially as entrepreneurs, we we beat that positive voice down like, no, no, we're not good enough for that. Go, go away. I'm not chasing those dreams. That's the one we need to be listening to. So how do you, you said get quiet and, and listen to it, but how do you start to trust and listen and step into greatness and possibility? Because that's a hard step to take. It's, it is, it can be, <clears throat> it can be if you say so, right? Yeah. Uh, if you, there is no, there is a simple answer to that. Um, and it's not easy. All of this work is simple, but not easy um, because we are, we come up against ourselves at, at every instant and we have to have the willingness and the inner strength, the resilience to be able to overcome ourselves, to recognize, first to recognize, no, actually first to even take the time to examine what your thoughts and feelings are. And then two, to sit with them and and recognize, oh, okay, yeah, I notice that I am saying this to myself. Hmm, is, is that true? Like, or do I actually believe that? Or where does that come from? Like, there's a lot of different questions that you can begin to ask yourself. So, that's where the answer is always the same. You have to do the work. You have to take a time out. You have to look at yourself. And then if you can't, if you aren't in the place yet, because it does take practice like anything else. Like, you now, if you want to learn piano, it, it helps to have a teacher that shows you like your, no, actually your fingers need to be placed here if you want to be able to, uh, you know, navigate the board effectively. You have to learn like the physicality of it and that it really helps to have a mentor or a teacher there to help you do that. The same thing with anything and everything is when it comes to your mind, it really helps to have uh, a sounding board to say, to help you examine those thoughts or even help point out something that you might've missed because we don't see our own stuff. That's why we ask other people like uh, to, help us navigate a, a challenge or a solution. Like, can I bounce this off of you because you're gonna see something I'm not seeing because I'm limited by my experience and my perspective. And it's it's like that when we're doing our self work, we don't even notice the negative thoughts or like perceive negative thoughts because we've had them for so long, it just becomes us. So how do I, how do I begin to be able to notice what my thoughts are and then determine which ones are helpful and which ones aren't. And that's where I highly recommend working with somebody. And then once you get the hang of it, like it definitely is something that you can do on your own. But again, that takes discipline. That takes a commitment. That takes like, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do this. I'm going to practice this. So that's the answer for everything. And entrepreneurs definitely know that. There's a lot of work. It's only work when it comes to entrepreneurship. And you're always looking at challenges and then uh, seeking solutions. What's a creative solution to this? How do I optimize this? How do I systemize this? How do I prioritize that? It's the same with, with your well-being and with your thoughts and with your dreams and visions and, and your bigger mission. How do I – first, you have to ask the question <laughs> – it, begin, it begins with the question, and then you look at what the challenges are, and then you find the solution. And then you keep practicing. You keep failing. <laughs> There's a lot of failing in entrepreneurship, which is great, which is great. That's the, that's the growth, and, and that's what really shapes you and, and molds you and, and helps you figure out um, your own personal awesomeness, which further lends into what your bigger mission is. So I think that entrepreneurs are specifically – more inclined to like really be living into what their bigger mission is because they're already practicing that in many ways. 
Yeah. And I think for, for entrepreneurs, it always surprises me because we understand failure. We understand putting in the work and the effort to get what we want, but so many people, and you see this on the internet all the time. I see this in conversations I have with people. They want something, they know what they want. They see people like you who can help them. And they're like, no, 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 I'm going to DIY it first. Yeah. <laughs> No, it, yes, it starts with questions, ask the right questions. Hence, if you're watching the logo behind us, we always start with questions. That's how we find the answers, but then seek the teachers. We have a teacher in front of us, a coach, a consultant who can help, help you through this process and get there faster. What, what you can do for someone is probably save years off of their journey, which the most valuable resource that you have is your time, as we yes. discussed prior to this recording, um, based mm -hmm. on a, a nice little giveaway you have for us that'll be in the description down below. But I'm going to put your website on the screen here as we wrap up. You are obviously an expert. You're a coach in this field and you can help people shortcut their time. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the book you wrote on this topic and then what else we'll find on your website? Yeah, I have two books. One is How to Use Hypnosis to Master Your Brain. And my latest one is, was actually co-authored with 11 other amazing, talented individuals. And it's called The Bigger Mission. And it is within that book, we each share a story of um, a challenge that we faced and how we overcame that. Um, and I love sharing that because I'm always looking like, for solutions and it's, it birthed how, how each individual was also living into what their bigger mission is. And it's so cool that we all have, even though we all share uh, similar backgrounds in terms of our education and how we choose to be of service in the world, that we're all so different. Our experiences were so different and we all had tremendous challenges and we all came up with um, creative solutions in our own right. And I love that. I love that that exists. So there is a right person for you out there that can help you overcome the challenges that you have. And yeah, that's the thing is that we do get in our own way. And I love that you said that. Like, and I got in my own way for a really long time. And I don't have any regrets. Um, and I'm grateful that I finally got to the point where knowing how important it is to be working with the right people and not lying to myself. A lot of us lie to ourselves and say, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I'll get to that. Yeah, I know what I have to do and I'll do it when I have the time or, or uh, you'll half-ass it. That's what I did. I half-assed it for so long or I read all the books and I had the intellectual uh, knowing this, but I wasn't uh, practicing it or embodying it or actually allowing myself to get really vulnerable and and do the actual work. I was just reading about it and intellectualizing <laughs> uh, the the challenge instead of getting emotional and physical and doing the work in and around it. So if you're doing that, I really invite you to to shift and actually start uh, doing the work and challenging yourself and getting uncomfortable. If you're comfortable, you're not doing the work. You're not, if you're not doing the work and you, and you know that as an entrepreneur, if you're comfortable, then you, then you're stagnant. You're not growing. Um, it's the same thing with all the other areas of your life. How you do anything is how you do everything. So um, I look forward to hearing about how everybody is going to be growing and challenging themselves to live into their bigger missions. Yeah, that's that's so fantastic. Well, Lainey, thank you again for coming. This has been this has been a really insightful and important conversation that I think a lot of people need to have and need to hear. And this is the show, of course, that comes with homework. Like she just said, if you don't take action and you stay stagnant, you will not get the results. So go to her website. It's on the screen. It's in the show notes. And she has gifted you, the listener, so graciously her time. Again, her most valuable resource. There's a, a link down below in the show notes to book a free call and just see if you could possibly get unstuck, find that purpose, the bigger mission, and she can shortcut the time that it takes to do that. So um, I love that you're here. The 11 other people you wrote the book with are not here, but I yeah. encourage you to go check out that book too, because it is good to see different perspectives and then find the, the person that resonates with you and the solution that 
maybe inspires you like we've talked about. So this was a great episode. We covered too many topics in one short little podcast. So go take action, go to her website, take that first step and find your bigger mission. I will say this one last thing, and this is where it ties over into business. If you don't have your personal mission and purpose, your business will never thrive. Mm -hmm. I have seen that over and over and over consulting with every size company from my business partner with the fortune 50, all the way down to solopreneurs that we work with mission and purpose comes first with the entrepreneur and the founder and then through the company. So get this right. And then you will get your company, right? That's my soapbox for today. Lainey, thank you again for coming and for you listening, make sure you subscribe, like comment, do all the things we'll see on the next episode of harmonious at lunch.